friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl with me, Annalise. Today I've got a really cool new snake to share with you. This is a special snake that is only found around one lake in Mexico and nowhere else in the entire world. These guys are blue, not sad blue, not in blue, they are blue, and they are absolutely gorgeous. Let's meet the Lake Chapala Garter Snake. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that I have a special surprise for you at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Okay, so it's no secret that I love garter snakes. If you are new to my channel and you didn't know, I love garter snakes and have several groups of garter snakes from different species in my home. A couple months ago, someone reached out to me on Instagram needing to rehome their pair of Lake Chapala garter snakes and asked if I would be interested in taking them in, and I was like... Yes! 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 Yay! Yes. Yes, I would. Meet Thamnophus equus obscurus, the Lake Chapala Mexican garter snake. It was Roger Conant who published an article in 2003, though his research went back to the 1960s, which identified these guys and six other subspecies of the Mexican garter snake endemic to lakes in Mexico's trans-Mexican volcanic belt. These guys are a gorgeous bluish grayish brown with a pretty faded dorsal stripe, but it is their supralabial and neck scales that really steal the show. They are this gorgeous iridescent blue and teal and green color that continues all the way down their ventral scales, but just for fun, they switch it up at the tail to this beautiful pearl color. Amazing, right? They are just breathtaking. The pearl tail is my favorite part. It's just so pretty. Here's a fun fact about this blue color. No vertebrate animal has the ability to produce blue pigment. No reptile, bird, or mammal has any actual blue color. So this blue that you are seeing here, or what you see on a parrot or a dart frog, is a product of microscopic structures in the skin absorbing and reflecting light to make us see that area as blue. Blue animals have evolved to use engineering as a way to solve their inability to produce blue pigment. How cool is that? Compared to other garter snake species, Lake Chapala garters are big. Only California's giant garter snake, Thamnophus gigas, gets bigger. Although there are some resources that suggest that Lake Chapala's might actually exceed the max size of the giant garter snake and that these guys should be considered the biggest, but officially they stay in second place. Males, like Chupa here, are much smaller and more slender than the females, maxing out at about three feet. Whereas the ladies, like Cobra here, can exceed four feet and have this much blockier, larger head. Yeah, yeah, if you put their names together, you get Chupa Cobra. Normally when we adopt reptiles, we change their name based on the personalities that we see, but Chupacabra is too cute to change. Despite being named after a blood-sucking monster, and as big and fearsome as they might look compared to other garter snakes at least, they are actually very shy and gentle and not inclined to bite at all. And just like other garter snake species, they are social and do very well in groups. Not only do they not look like your typical garter snake, they don't feel like them either. As soon as you pick them up, they feel a whole lot more, I don't know, floppy? twisty, they really feel a whole lot more like a water snake, which kind of makes perfect sense. Many garter snakes are found readily hunting in the water, but like Chapala garter snakes, seem to be primarily aquatic. When not basking or participating in mating groups in the willows growing in or near the water's edge, these guys have been observed spending most of their time in the water, either hunting or just floating on the water near the rocky shore, basking on the surface. How cool is that? Now, as for these two, they have no lake to bask in, but they do really like to hang out in their water bin for hours with just their heads exposed. If you're thinking of getting some Lake Chapalas, a big water source is a must have. What do you think so far? Aren't these Lake Chapala garter snakes super cool? 
you know what else will be super cool? Hitting that like button, which really helps get this video out to other folks that will appreciate them as much as you and I do. It also helps me and my channel out a whole bunch. Thank you. As I mentioned earlier, these snakes are only found in Mexico, specifically around Lake Chapala or Lago Chapala as it's known in Mexico. I am a Spanish genius! It's the biggest freshwater lake in the country, at about 80 kilometers long and 18 kilometers wide but it's shallow, with an average depth of only 7 meters. Declining water levels of the lake is a very big concern. The lake is fed by several rivers, including the Lermo River, which is quite polluted with industry and livestock runoff. But water has not actually flowed out of Lake Chapala in over 30 years. Increased sedimentation has further reduced the depth of the lake, increasing the temperature and rate of evaporation. And with no outflow, concentrations of sediment and pollution keep increasing. On top of that, unregulated fishing and a lack of adequate restocking by the government is also a big concern to the health of the lake and to the snakes that call this lake and only this lake their home. Some work is being done to improve the quality of the water in Lake Chapala, but there is still a long way to go. I'll put some links in the description below if you want to learn more or are interested in helping. Lake Chapala garter snakes are what's known as an allopatric species. An allopatric species is created when two groups of organisms get separated by a physical or geographical barrier like, say, a lake that is formed in a chain of volcanoes. Over time, this separation allows the isolated organism to become its own subspecies of the original organism, or even eventually, its own species. Long, long ago, a population of Mexican garter snakes got isolated and were unable to migrate away from the lake. Over time, they evolved into the more aquatic subspecies with brownish backs and blue-gray bellies, perfectly suited for life in and around the rocks and water of Lake Chapala. Neat, eh? Lake Chapala garter snakes are pretty scarce in the hobby, especially in Canada, and there isn't a ton of information regarding their husbandry. In the past, people have made the assumption that because they come from Mexico, their enclosure needs to be, well, hot. But this is not the case. Lake Chapala is at an elevation of over 5,000 feet and is more temperate than one might think. In fact, the National Geographic Society named the local weather of the Lake Chapala area as the second best climate in the world. I even heard someone describe it as an all year round spring. I want to live there. It's springtime all the time. Are you kidding me? Spring's my favorite season. Not just because I'm born in it. No, it's because all the reptiles and amphibians wake up in springtime. And there's baby animals all over. Based on the temperatures around the lake, the basking area only needs to be around 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. And the nighttime temps there are typically around 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. So really easy to maintain in captivity. But this is not a care guide, so make sure that you do your own research if you are thinking of getting some of these blue beauties. Now, if you have been watching my videos, you may have noticed that I like to replicate a tiny slice of each reptile's natural environment into their enclosure. So even though these two came in an awesome enclosure that meets all of their needs, after doing a ton of research on Chapala garters and realizing how aquatic and climby they are in the wild, they will be, you guessed it, getting an upgrade. We're still figuring out all the details, but my plan is for it to be a paludarium with a large water area, big enough for them to actually swim and maybe even hunt underwater. We'll be putting a ton of shelves and tall branches in for them to climb. This is the first paludarium we'll be making, so there will be lots to learn, I'm sure. Let me know in the comments below if you have any tips and if you'd like to see that enclosure built. As with all garter snakes, these guys do well on a rodent diet, but a varied diet is best. Given their primary source of food in the wild is fish, offering them fish often is a great idea. Just not goldfish. As with all garter snakes, the high levels of thymianase in goldfish and some other feeder fish can cause dangerous vitamin B deficiencies. Feeder guppies, frozen silversides, even pieces of trout are all safe options. Babies do great 
with guppies, chicken hearts, and worms. Speaking of babies, Chupa and Cobra are a breeding pair, which means that we could one day have baby Lake Chapala garter snakes. How cool is that? You know what's even cooler? They already had babies! Surprise! After we got them, Cobra gave birth to these seven little squiggly noodles. Aren't they cute? You can see their stripes so well, and the yellow coloring, more typical of other species of garters, is present. But that will fade as they grow and age, and the powder blue coloring will come out. I am so excited that we have these little baby snakes. We will be continuing to let these two breed if they like, and of course you guys will always be in the know about any upcoming clutters. Very exciting, right? These guys are doing super well and are growing fast, and some, when they are big enough, will be joining their folks in their new bigger enclosure. Another reason for the upgrade. What do you think? Aren't these little guys stunning and adorable? Even though it might be some extra work to give them the amount of water and height that they thrive best with, is a Lake Chapala garter snake something you might want in your collection? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye! The new. The new. The new. We are the next to say. Nini. <laughs> Given their primary sus. Sus. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember. <laughs> remember. <laughs> and this is how you make a snake pretzel. No, I don't do it well. Can I just say how adorable they are right now? Yeah, they're stinking cute. Let me get my phone. Nobody have. Mexico, Del Geats, Horn Scorn, Battle in the Navajo, Kung Kung the Model, Lizard, Manga, Flying Dino, I don't want to die, but when I do, I'll be the guy, whoa! whoa. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. So what do you think so far? 